Welcome to the Stan Sheriff Center. Time to take a look at the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the match. C-Mac, take us right to him. Well, for BYA, it's the Cougar Roofers. They now block their opponents 70 to 40 this year, except for a 5'10 center. The rest of the front row will always be six feet tall or taller or taller. Clearly a BYU strength. And for Hawaii, back row attack, I think they've got to get Maglo involved. I think you'll see it. And she's in the front row. We'll be setting some back row sets. Kenora Leahy and Chris McLaughlin here courtside as 10th ranked BYU slaps it into play. And we're playing volleyball here at the SSC. Casey Castillo will get first crack at it from the outside. Is blocked back. Second time, sends it long. And it's a point for BYU right off Jump Street. Let's take a look at the Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And as C-Mac mentioned, BYU, one of the best blocking teams in the nation, fourth coming into this week nationally with three and a half blocks per set. Serve goes long, though, and Hawaii on the board. Uh, here was Baby G, the server of the year last week. What a performer she put on that eight-point run against Utah. Earned her some camera time in our Game On segment. Exactly. Several interviews that featured Gianna Guinasso, the senior from Huntington Beach. Yes, look at that. Again, she forces forces a bad pass. pass. You're right. Free ball coming here for Hawaii. Marine Yosia goes middle to Emily Maglio, who bounces it off of the floor. And Hawaii jumps in front 2-1. Oh, that is exactly what Robin Amo Santos and his coaching staff want to see. Exactly. Let's see if G, uh, Baby G serves somewhere different. Last week, she served eight different places in that eight-point run. Eight straight serves. This time it'll be two service attempts. They're trying to go to that deep corner was perhaps a tad a bit too ambitious. But yeah, eight straight serves. It was part of a 9-0 run and an epic come from behind win in set one for Hawaii against Utah. Alas, the Utes would end up winning a very competitive match for the most part in four sets. Hawaii now two and four coming into this match. BYU is six and oh. In fact, they've only lost two sets all year. I mean, Maglio trying to change some of those fortunes for the Cougars as she gets her second kill. Well, that that matchup, Maglio versus Burnett, two of the best blockers in the country going eyeball to eyeball. Maglio getting the win there. And here is Claire Marie Anderson of Punahou Ho School. Sending it to the middle of the floor. Set goes right side. Here's Cozy Burnett dug up by Savannah Kahakai. Bump set from Yosia goes to Castillo. Two-handed in the air by Mary Lake. A very capable libero, as is Kahakai, exemplified right there. McKenna Granado roll shot, diving save late. Slide goes to Burnett. She's blocked back. And Ruth! Castillo and Maglio about as big a block as Hawaii has to offer. 6-3 and 6-3. And Hawaii draws first blood in the blocking department, despite the fact they're going up against the number four blocking team in the country, as you said. Hawaii no slouch, though, averaging 3.2 blocks as a team per set. That one dug it back over the net, and a second rip at it by McKenna Miller, 6'1 sophomore from Murrieta, California, averaging three kills per set. She's a preseason all West Coast Conference selection, was a conference first teamer as a true frosh last year. And a freshman of the year in the conference. Here's Castillo, big wind up. And she unleashes one right to the middle of that Cougar defense. Hawaii up two. And you'll see Amelie notices the mismatch on the outside. The 6-3 Castillo against the 5-10 Lindy Haddock. Good to see Castillo with some energy here tonight. She and Sophia Howling, freshman middle, missed several practices this week because of flu-like symptoms as the touch shot works for BYU. So she's still getting subbed out. Normally she gets subbed out in this particular rotation. She serves and gets out. So she's going to stay in the game, maybe be a back row attacker as we talked about earlier. Junior setter, Wendy Haddock, now with the serve. Slide goes to Maglio off the hands and out. And Emily Maglio making her presence felt very quickly here tonight. Bang, 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 Maglio. One, two, three across the front. Looking sharp. Three swings, three kills for Mags. And the serve by Kahakaya, jump serve with some heat. Outside set goes to Danelle Stetler. Got the touch. 
and gets the point for BYU. This is night one of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge. Last preseason quote unquote tournament for Hawaii before they get into a little bit more of a regular schedule pace and of course conference play not far in the future. Oh, that one almost whiffed by Granado and a free chance here for BYU. Outside, the swing by Ronnie Jones Perry goes through the block and down. Six foot junior from West Jordan, Utah. Last week, the WCC Player of the Week, Boise State Classic MVP last week. He's got game. Out serve though, in Hawaii. Gets it back. How about, how about Ronnie Jones Perry numbers last week in Sac State? 13 kills, no errors, at 565. She leads the team with over four kills per set. Yeah, a substitution here for Hawaii to make sure it was made official as Kendra Kelch enters into the match in place of Claire Marie Anderson and Noreen Yosia, the sensational sophomore setter for Hawaii. With the jump serve. Pass by Lake. Left side it goes to Stetler. Diving save by Kahakai. That was pretty. Free chance here for the Cougars. Outside Stetler again. Goes off the shoulder of Yosia. Back bump set to Castillo. Got a pretty decent touch on it. Stetler a third time. Roll shot. Two handed in the air by Granado. Yosia couldn't catch him napping. Pancake save by Hatta. And then Stetler. Puts an end to it. Well, make that Ronnie Jones Perry putting an end to it from the outside position. A long rally there for both sides. Well, some great swings by the Cougars and a nice pancake dig right there to keep the rally alive. You'll see a little side sit there, didn't drop. Outside, here's Kelsch. Back up in the back row there by Lake. Left side, Jones Perry. Oh boy, she's bringing the thunder here from that outside position. Getting some. Major lift off of the court, too. And what a live arm she's got. She was Bible player three times in high school in Utah. Averaging four kills per set. Overpass. Pinballed back and forth. And it's going to be a point for BYU. 3 0 run here for the Cougars. What happened there? Uh, it was a the ball was, it was an overpass and you'll see went to try to set it and she is back row right now. Remember she just served so she can't go up and attack the ball at the net. Garcia sets up right side to Granado, heavy-handed. A great pickup there by Lake. And then off of one foot, Ronnie Jones Perry strikes again. So Jones Perry already with six kills on nine swings, blemish free. And they've got some live arms, don't they? Lake with the serve. Three-point bulge here for the Cougars. Here's Sky Williams from the middle. Right side, Stetler gets blocked back. Stetler from the second vantage point gets blocked back. Now on the other side, Jones Perry dug up by Castillo over the net. So the Cougars still on the attack. Another block in the middle, but it was hanging right above the twine for Jones Perry, about as easy a kill as she'll get all night long. She's already got seven. Cougars in a 5-0 run. Maybe a good time to call an early timeout here and slow these Cougars down. What he needs to apply the tourniquet here. Kelsch gets solo roofed by Cozy Burnett. It is what she does. Averaging 1.75 blocks per set. Gets a solo stuff right there. Timeout, Hawaii. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Kaiser Permanente, and Island Air. Welcome back. 6-0 run here for the BYU Cougars. Hawaii in a sticky rotation right now, trying to play their way through it. The touch shot there by McKenna Granado. Chance for the Cougars. Here is Ronnie Jones Perry. High hands. Kept alive by Kahaka. Granado was dug up by Mary Lake. Great libero work so far in this opening set. Alas, right there. 
Kalakai yeah. unable to come up with that save. That's now seven straight points ripped off by Brigham Young University. Hey, Granado can bounce her the ball she's hit all year long, and they got popped up in the back by BYU defense. And they're, they're playing some great back row defense as well as having that big block. Looking every bit the formidable team as they have been reputed to be here this season. Raquel swing goes long, and this is right now a run that Hawaii has not been able to stop. They are looking to apply that proverbial tourniquet, and they'll bring Sophia Allen into the front row in place of Sky Williams to see if she can provide a spot. And that helps, obviously, the freebie to get them moving around the rotation. Three of Hawaii's eight points have come on BYU service errors. Hawaii is having trouble scoring their own points, getting their offense going, only hitting 143 right now. That ends an 8-0 BYU run. Here is Granada with the serve. Set goes left side. Jones Perry gets another kill. See, Matt, she is unstoppable right now. That's eight put downs already for Ronnie Jones Perry. Eight put downs, no errors. Hits this one down the line. Sees the block go cross court on her, so she goes down the line. She's hitting all beer 6-15 right now. Now Stetler now to serve. Two-handed by Granada. Middle set, Howling couldn't touch it down. Bump set goes cross court. Jones Perry from off the net, off the block, and down. She has been amazing. This is only set one, and her numbers would be a pretty decent match stat line for some players. How about the match stat line she's got going? If you add the last match on where she had 13 kills and no errors, she's got a, like a no-hitter going. Here's Granada from the back row, scramble play for Hawaii. Advantage Cougars, guess who? Dug up by Noreen Rosia. Bump set by Kahakai, and Hawaii couldn't get a swing on. It's a chance for the Cougars. Jones, Perry, the touch, and it hit the floor. Well, she's showing the full array. 10 kills now for Ronnie Jones Perry on 15 swings, and a big fat goose egg under the error cone. She averages four kills per set on the year, so she's more than doubled her productivity. Kirsten Sibley now put into the match for Hawaii as Robin Amos Santos desperately searches for a solution here. Castillo gets it down. That violation called against BYU. Either way, you slice it, it's a point for Hawaii. And that's important because now Emily Maglio, who got off to such a hot start in this opening set, back on the floor. Pretty good foot roll by Hawaii, 6'3", 6'3", Sibley, 6'1". Diana Granasso, they could use one of those uh, runs of eight straight serves right about now. Hawaii with the block there, and it winds up a roof. Good things just seem to happen more often than not when Gianna Granasso is serving the ball. And when that goes in the front row, nice combination. <laughs> yeah. serving 17. Seckles high and away, Jones Perry off the block and out. So even when they seem to be containing her, she still tools the block to her advantage. That's now 11 kills. Cougars are looking like a load here early season. Oh, real deal, you know, top 10 teams. We expect them to play like this. They're a lot like UCLA. They're big, they're athletic, they're well coached. Tough serving team, obviously, forcing the bad pass by Hawaii. Chance for the Cougars. Left side set. That's McKenna Miller got the touch. And they just continue to come at you in waves. If it's not Ronnie Jones Perry, it's McKenna Miller, who head coach Heather Olmstead describes as having a heavy arm. Timeout Hawaii. Welcome back, series record sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. Hawaii leading the all-time series 17 to 6, last meeting 2013. December 7th, a day that will live in infamy here in this arena as well. Hawaii in a second round meeting with the Cougars got swept. Alexa Gray, if you remember, was pretty unstoppable in that match. 13 kills at seven blocks. That was a UH team as the Cougars get to 20 here in set number one. Kosi Burnett 
putting that one down. That was a Hawaii team that featured the likes of Emily Hartong, Ali Longo, and a young Nikki Taylor. At the time, it was the worst home loss in Rainbow Wahine program history. Houston Sibley with a little bit of a laser beam. And that was really, really a good BYU team. I remember calling that match, actually. And, uh, I remember Alexa Gray was just yeah. such an athlete. She was so good. She ended up making All-American a couple of years in a row. I mean, maybe three years in a row. She was something special. So here's Claire Marie Anderson with the serve. Hawaii has some catching up to do here in set one. Miller off the block, diving save Anderson. Free ball coming, though, for the Cougars. Just keeping the pressure on. Backside set. That's Jones Perry. But she hits it long, and it's a point for Hawaii. And yes, folks, Ronnie Jones Perry is human. Superwoman has a chink in the armor. <laughs> First hitting error of the match. 11 kills on 18 swings, hitting 556. How about that? Hawaii within eight. Backside, it goes to Burnett. Diving save, Granado. Slide to Mags. Lake got it up. And there's going to be a free ball coming for Hawaii. Can they take advantage? You'll see again the slide to Magwheel. Dug up by Lake. Here's Miller from off the net. Right there is Kahaka. You'll see it. Outside. Castillo the roll shot. Pancake save by Lake. Burnett touches it over. Hawaii on the attack again. Back row set to Granado. And then the some thunder from the junior on Punahou. That was one of the wrinkles that Rob and Los Santos put into the offensive lineup. Here's the pancake, first of all, by Lake from BYU. Great play. And Granado finishes with that pipe out of the back row. Lake already with nine digs here in this opening set. Here's Miller down the line. Handcuff Anderson. And it's a point for BYU. Hawaii showing some signs of life, but it is quite a gap that they are trying to cross here in this opening stanza. Jose Burnett, senior out of San Diego with the serve. It goes into the net. If there is one area where BYU has left something to be desired, it is from the service line. Four errors. And yet they still lead by seven here in the latter stages of set one. Casey Castillo to serve. Sends it deep and out. Untimely service errors have been a bit of a bugaboo for this Rainbow Wahine squad here through the first six plus matches right. as McKenna Ross has Not put in. Not necessarily the volume of them, but the timeliness of them. You'll see it. Goes to Granado. She's been heavy handed tonight, C Mac. Well, it helps it. She's got Magler up there up front running a wide slide to the other antenna which gives her a little bit of room on the outside, a little bit of a split block. Black got there that time, but they were overlapping. Granado took advantage of a moving block that time. Two kills on eight swings. You have commented, as well as members of our corner crew in the pregame, you'd like to see a little bit more of a distribution offensively for Hawaii. Granado being relied upon perhaps a little too much. I mean, she already, coming into tonight's match, had 243 kill attempts as a net violation goes against Hawaii and gives BYU its 23rd point. She's averaging 10 and a half attempts per set. And while she's certainly up to it physically, it's just quite a burden to have to bestow on somebody. And what it does too is it allows the other team to, to uh, write up a very simple scouting report. Get two up on Granado all the time. Well, it didn't matter that time. Scouting report or no. Granado able to find the deep corner. She's getting some quality swings, that is for sure here tonight. Third kill on nine attempts, no errors. And Green, you'll see it back behind the service line. As you see the numbers for McKenna Granado versus Utah in what was a four set loss. It's 64 swings against the Utes. Outside, Jones Perry caught it fat, no touch up front. And it's a point for Hawaii. They're within six. Still a long way to go here in this first set. But again, Hawaii showing some signs, enough so that BYU head coach Heather Olmstead signals for a timeout. We'll take a break as well. BYU in control. 
Welcome back. Need tickets to an upcoming UH contest? Visit HawaiiAthletics.com. Call 944-BOWS or visit the Stan Sheriff Center box office. Three easy ways to get your seats for exciting UH sports action. Well, the BYU Cougars through most of this set one proving to be all they're cracked up to be. Leading 23-17 out of the timeout. Hitting 359 in this first set compared to 200 for Hawaii. Good serve by Yosia. Outside it goes to Ronnie Jones. Perry took something off and it just split the uprights of that block. Not sure how it made it through the block, but Jones Perry has a way of doing that tonight. The ball she's, when she hits seem to have eyes on them. 12 kills now, only two errors. So Aloha ball for BYU. Sophia Howling, like Castillo, had to deal with some flu-like symptoms this week, so missed practice time. Both participated in serve and pass workout today, though, in preparation for the match. So both are out there. And both look pretty fresh. Yeah, looking like they have some energy there. Some spring in the legs. Remains Aloha ball, though, and it will be that way for a while here in this opening set for BYU. Outside, it goes to Jones Perry, off the block and down. So Ronnie Jones Perry puts together a 13-kill opening set. En route to leading the Cougars to a 25-18 decision. The teams will swap sides. They'll do it again. Hawaii trailing one set to none. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Strong and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Ronnie, short for Veronica Jones Perry. Of course, in Provo, they refer to her as Miss Jones Perry, and she put on a show in that first set. 13 kills on 21 swings, just two hitting errors, see now. She did it in all kinds of ways. Hitting overpasses like that. Hit down the line, she had cross court. Uh, she had tip shots to go down. She sh showed a lot of versatility in getting those kills. All right, let's take a look at tonight's Jack Bat. And here it is, building walls, top 50 NCAA blockers in tonight's match. Yes, three of them. Cozy Burnett for BYU is eighth. <laughs> Individually, Sky Williams, number 34, coming into this week, and Emily Maglio on her heels, 37, the most prolific blocker in the nation, statistically. Another statistic that's interesting is uh, the two the Barons are playing well tonight. Savannah Kaukai with six digs out of Hawaii's 14, and Mary Lake, nine digs. She averages about four and a half. She doubled her output there in the first set, so the, the two Liberos playing well. All right, so we saw what transpired in set one. It was a lot of Ronnie Jones Perry. How does Hawaii try to offset that here in set two? Uh, I think get a couple of ladders maybe and start blocking Ronnie Jones Perry with some ladders. <laughs> or maybe an extra blocker, a seventh, a seventh blocker. She's tough. Savannah Kahakai, as you mentioned, six digs in that first set. She will serve here to start. Set number two. Cozy Burnett, good swing there, but a one-hand dig by Granado. Free chance here again for the Cougars. Burnett a second time, the touch shot. Diving saved by Sibley, and then the joust at the net is won by BYU. Well, to answer your question seriously, uh, you know, fundamentally, I don't think Hawaii has to do much different. They just got rolled over by this, this Mack truck that was headed their way. And I don't think there'll be another Mack truck in the second set if they just play fundamentally sound. It'd be a much different game. Kawakai with the first touch. Bump set goes outside to Castillo, trying to go high hands. And Haddock sends it into the net. Castillo, to her credit, seemed to be ready for it. That second touch dump shot there by Lindy Haddock, but uh, it didn't get clear the twine anyway. She also did a nice job of hitting that high bump set from Yossi from the back row. That's a difficult set to hit. So Anderson serves, one all here in the second. BYU out of system, will bump outside to McKenna Miller. And Emily Maglio says, Aole. And Hawaii leads 2-1. I think she wants to go for 37th in the country and pass the freshman. <laughs> yeah, she's, I think she doesn't like that Howling's ahead of her. What do you think? <laughs> Can't let the freshman take over. Sky Williams, of course, quite the debut, had 12 blocks 
Oh, on it's Chris Williams. I'm sorry, it's Sky Williams. Diving save by Yosia. BYU wanted a net violation, and now here comes the whistle. Denise Hansen, the down official, was actually signaling the net violation, but no whistle sound was uh, heard uh, at any point throughout that sequence until late. Up on top of the ladder, it's Ernie Ho and the line judges, Sam Montalvo and Wes Kowachi. There is the touch. Here's Castillo against the double block. Good save there by Stetler. But nobody had her back. And Hawaii gets the point. So a little bit of disarray on the BYU side of the net. We haven't seen that much tonight. They played like a well-oiled machine most of the night. And you're right, that was a bit of disarray. Casey Castillo continuing to grow and develop now that she has solidified herself as a starting outside here for Hawaii. Serves it long for the second time. And again, not the volume of outserves that is really the problem for Hawaii. It's the timing of those outserves. This is one of those matches where you feel like once you get any bit of momentum, you do not want to let it go. Exactly. You know, also don't want to let the other team go on long runs. Outside, here's Granado against the double block. Down the line and in. McKenna Granado with another quality swing. That's four kills on 10 attempts. She's error free. When she sees the line given to her. She's in the scouting report probably is that she's a seam cross court hitter. So she is privileged. She's got more tools in her bag than just that line seam. Granasso in to serve. High and away. The set goes to Stetler down the line and wide. Point for Hawaii, they're up 5-3. Manasso once again forcing a pass, goes beyond the three-meter line, pulling the center back behind the three-meter line and uh, putting BYU out of system. Not a lot of velocity on these Guanasso serves. What makes them so tough? Right side, that's Miller getting it down. Some smoke of her own. Again, Granasso serve, forced the ball off the net. You anyway, had no middle attack, so the blockers could go over and line up on either in hitter and put up a pretty good block. So here's Miller now to serve. Bad first touch there by Anderson. Ross two hands it over. Chance here for the Cougars. Outside, Jones Perry, yes. Like clockwork. She's something special. She's got that heavy arm. She, she sees the block go. She sees the block go outside, so she goes inside. And that's an ace from McKenna Miller. That's the one thing about Hawaii. Hawaii rarely gets ace. They're pretty good. They're pretty good at taking the balls that are close. They, they will take the 50-50 ball. This was the sticky rotation for Hawaii in set one, too. Ross from the back row sends it long. Point, BYU. It was in set one in this rotation that the Cougars were able to sort of flip the script. They are starting to do the same here in the second stanza. That's exactly why I think I would call a timeout early here before the Cougars went on a major run like they did last time. Outside, high ball set to Granado. Tried to go hard angle, missed wide to avoid the block. Point BYU there up three. You see the consideration for Robin Amos Santos contemplating what to do here. Decides not to signal for an early timeout. Wants her team to play out of it. You'll see a bump set to Ross in the back row. The touch shot hits the floor. Miller thought she had gotten the spatula underneath. But Ernie Ho saying that it touched. Now we do have replay challenges here once again at our disposal, but no notion of that from Heather Olmstead. Let's take a look. That ball is a lot on the floor and just a little bit on the hand. I think it would have been overruled. So six serving eight. And Marine Yosia, who can score from the service line, sending some fire the other way. Diving save there by Ross. Middle set to Howling, blocked and roofed. Oh, Hawaii had the advantage. Blocked well, well, by Kennedy Redding that time. Oh, and six foot four inches of her. Great play, a red, very alert. A redshirt freshman from Bountiful, Utah. 
Outside, Sibley, touch shot, diving save there by Haddock. Jones Perry, yes. It's Groundhog Day right now when it comes to Ronnie Jones Perry. But we were mentioning Kennedy Redding on that solo block. Didn't play last year. Cozy Burnett injured last year. The middle's working for BYU. Welcome back. Checking out our first Hawaiian Bank top three. Longest NCAA side-out matches. So going back to side-out scoring, Hawaii versus BYU back in November of 1998. Western Athletic Conference Championship match in Las Vegas, 175 points scored. As you take a look at that five-set marathon. Coming out of the timeout, McKenna Granado pulls the string. Nice little play there, run out of the break. Yeah, another nice little recall. I like why he's mixing it up a little bit. Running a little crossing pattern. Something we haven't done much of this year. What do you remember about that 1998 match? I remember it was long, three hours and 38 minutes. And <laughs> it, was, it was really long and just epic. Great volleyball. There's Burnett. Good dig there by Granado. You'll see us sets her up in the back row. Was there a touch? No touch. Goes long. Point BYU and Robin Amol Santos is going to challenge something in that sequence. And she is asking the bench, what do we challenge? The touch or the in-out call? And she's rapping with Denise Hansen. She's going to say, hey, Denise, we'll take the touch over the line, Paul, whichever one is in, the, in our favor. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to do that under the protocol here. You know, in and out on the line is an easier one to pick up. Te no, technically, I think, from our standpoint, as far as the cameras go, we can see the line call much easier than we can see a touch on the block. But again, three challenges each side, and you have to pinpoint specifically what part of the play you're challenging, whether it's the touch at the net or the in-out call. So I'm assuming Robin Amol Santos, oh, maybe she is Ooh. even challenging the touch on the dig attempt there. Interesting. Well, there's no touch on the block, yeah. that's for sure. And there, this is where there might be a touch right there Ooh. in the back row. And the line was definitely out. Let's take a look here. It's close. It's close everywhere. It is. Close there. <laughs> close to the touch. Close on the line. So good luck to Robin. Good luck to Denise Hansen. We were talking a little bit more about, about how good this BYU team is and comparing them. They're number 10th in the country, number 10 in the country. UCLA is number 11. Uh, I, I really think this BYU team is, looks good enough to be a, a top eight team, a finalist in a regional. What do you think? You think they have final four potential? And I think they have final four potential. Anytime you get to the final four of the regionals, you get a chance to, get, sure. to go all the way. All right. The ruling. A touch, and it's a point for Hawaii. And Robin Amo wins the challenge. Wow. We get a shocker there. So it goes from 11 serving seven Big to difference. eight serving 10. Big difference in rally scoring that way. Those challenges, game changers sometimes. Here's Bernate in the middle. Played up by Howling. Bump set goes right side, Sibley. Dug up tight to the net. It's knuckled over by Haddock. Chance for Hawaii. Right side, Sibley. Blocked and roofed. If they don't get you in their offensive transition, there is a really good chance they will get you at the net defensively. Yeah, one mistake Sibley made there was hitting in to the big block. You know, the, what is she, the number eight blocker in the country? Hit anywhere but, but that gets her. Might have been a better choice. Stetler with the serve, and Castillo whips it with two open palms. So 12 serving eight. Some anemic offensive numbers so far here in set two. BYU hitting 154. That's after hitting 390 in the first set. Hawaii hitting 0 .077. 
We'll see if Stetler goes at Castillo again. My, my guess is that she will. Stetler, former participant in the U.S. Junior National Program. Here's Castillo rising high. Touch shot is dug up by Stetler, though. Outside Jones Perry. High hands right there as you'll see it. So Kahakai bump sets right side to Sibley. Roll shot. Diving saved by Martindale. Jones Perry again. Good up there by Granado. Castillo over the shoulder roll shot. What a layout saved by Mary Lake. Jones Perry then pumps it long. Was there a touch? There was a touch on the net. Net violation gives the point to BYU, but we saw some fantastic defense on both sides over the course of that rally. Yeah, this, is, this is a great layout right here by Mary Lake. So she and Kahakai are putting on a show tonight, playing some great defense. 10 digs now for Lake in this match. Granado from the back row, triple block up, and seemingly impenetrable. And nobody fooled there, all three blockers cut on that Granado was gonna hit out of the back row. BYU on the same juncture as in set one, starting to create some space. Well, already used one timeout, they've got one left. Again, they attack Castillo. Perfect pass that time. Backside set to Sibley. Sends it long. No touch. Point for the Cougars. And it's 15-8. I like that choice she made going down the line. That was a good choice. She had the big blocker, Burnett, in the cross court. So she tried to go long. She was a wise area to choose. 5-0 run here for the Cougars. Remember, they used an 8-0 run to secure control of set one. Hawaii needs something. Castillo, the touch shot. That's not going to get it down. Middle set. Burnett pinballs it around on the Hawaii side, and it's down for another Cougar point, and they have the Rainbow Wahine doubled up here in set two. So Robin Amos Santos once again. Trying to crack the code here that is Brigham Young University. Yes, his points are being scored while Emily Magno is in the back row. Right side, Sibley blocked back, pops it up. Howling takes a swing at it. BYU now on the attack. Here's Jones Perry, the touch. Pulled the string at just the right time. That is now 17 kills for Ronnie Jones Perry. For someone who only averages four kills per set on the year, and maybe her career is that as well. All of a sudden to be averaging eight kills per set tonight is pretty amazing. Career high 20 kills. She's achieved it twice. So she's already closing in on that here in set two. Here's Ross. And that's an out ball. And BYU now leads by double digits. Um, avoidance attack is going on now. Avoiding the block rather than challenging the block. Heather Olmstead, head coach for BYU, telling us prior to the match, she feels like the Cougars often get underestimated, often get overlooked, despite the fact that they have been one of the top teams in the country for the last handful of years. Pancake saved by Burnett. That's your middle, scooping it up with the pancake save, and then Jones Perry blasting it down on the kill. BYU leads by 11. They look tremendous. Your middle, busting out the spatula. And then Jones Perry doing what she does. Robert Kikala, Steven Sai, Nate Ilawa, and Rich Miano. Certainly this match will be a topic of some discussion, as well as the individual performance by Ronnie Jones Perry. Now 18 kills. And just to make matters worse, out of the timeout, Danelle Stetler deals an ace out of the deck. That was a great serve. Forcing Savannah Kalakai to cover so much court. BYU leads by a dozen, 20, serving eight. This is a fairly stunned crowd here at the Stan Sheriff Center at the moment, Cena. They're being entertained by a BYU team that's just solid in every area, fundamentally strong, they're experienced, and they return five starters, a bunch of seasoned veterans. And exploiting some of the vulnerabilities of this Hawaii team. Howling, second time in the middle, right there, Stetler. Dump shot works that time by Lindy Haddock. 
Her twin sister Lacey is an outside hitter on the squad. We haven't seen her yet tonight, but Haddock averaging 9.5 assists per set. Also led the West Coast Conference last year in that category. Just a junior. He's 21, serving eight. Back row set, Granado. Some chin music there on Stedler. Finally, Maglio gets to rotate back to the front row as we see Granado unload in that pipe attack. Well, that's when Hawaii has been at its most effective as Kahakai just missed that deep corner when Emily Maglio has been in the front row. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of the wrinkles is to have Maglio go through all six rotations at some point in the very near future would play opposite and hit the D ball like Nikki Taylor did last year. There's Maglio in the middle with some definity. Good connection there between Yosia and her middle. Going up against a very good blocker, the number eight blocker in the country, Kelsey Burnett. So Mags with four kills, seven swings, no errors, hitting 571. Also has three blocks. Claire Marie Anderson to serve. Diving pass by Stetler, bump set right side goes to Burnett. Good up there by Kahakai. Ross tried to go over that block, went high hands, got a touch, as called by Denise Hansen. Ernie Ho was rewarding the point to BYU. Hansen called touch. Now Heather Olmstead checking with her players to see if there was in fact a touch and decides not to challenge the call. Good call by Denise Hansen. She was very close to that play. She was right next to the block. Good call. McKenna Miller, the restoring order for BYU's vantage point. And we are going to see one of the Hawaii girls on the BYU roster entering the match. Alohi Robbins Hardy, yes. Those last names resonate here among Hawaii volleyball fans. 6'2 senior from Waimanalo out of Kamehameha Kapalama. Mom Mary, Dad Damien, both playing volleyball at the University of Hawaii back in the day. Here's Maglio on the slide. Alohi Robbins Hardy. She's coming as a serving specialist there, but I watched some practice this week and she was, she was uh, setting the second group, the B team. In the past, last year, she set an awful lot uh, on the A team. Also played several years of basketball over there at BYU. Miller's dug up. Good dig there by Ross. Here is Granado blocked back. So Kahakai back bump set to Granado. A little bit heftier that time, but it's still returned. Middle set goes to Redding. The touch shot is sniffed out. Here's Granado a third time. Tried to put a little more oomph into it, but rejected by Lindy Haddock getting most of that one. She tried to get Haddock the smaller of the blockers, but Haddock would have nothing to do with it. Third on the team in blocks coming into tonight's match, the setter, Lindy Haddock. 1.1 blocks per set, that's huge for a setter. So Aloha ball here in the second for BYU. Mags blocked. And a free ball coming here for the Cougars. Where do they go? Haddock goes middle to Redding, dug up by Kahakai. That's dig number eight for her. Granado blocked back, Kahakai pops it up. Granado from off the net, high hands. Good save there by Jones Perry. Miller on the outside, down the line and in. And BYU just continues to wear you down. Coming at you in waves. And the onslaught continues. They finish set two, 25-12. And as we head to the break, they'll have a chance to open up the broom closet here at the SSC. Welcome back. Let's check out the McDonald's match statistics. Fairly lopsided, C-Mac. Well, it's as lopsided as the set scores. 32 kills to 19. That's a big difference. 373 to 121 kill percentage. Big blocks. BYU ahead there as well. And digs about even. And then there's Maglio. She had 556 in the first two sets. Had six, five kills and nine. Uh, no errors. Now she's got six kills. No errors and 10 tries, hitting 600. That's why I think she needs to get set more. And I like to see her go through the back row and hit some from 
all three positions back there. Anderson tickles the tape on the serve. Left side, Jones Perry, one hand diving save by Kahakai. Granado roll shot, chance for the Cougars. They go middle to Burnett, puts it down. But BYU has been most effective. It has been clear and obvious when Emily Maggio has been in the back row, thus on the bench. That's when he scored most of the points. But uh, they've showed you call it that Hawaii moved their block out to the line there a little bit. BYU hit cross court, and there was Kakai to dig it. You'll see a high and away to Castillo. That's popped up in the air by Danelle Stetler. Home set left side, Miller blocked, joust at the net, diving save, Kahakai, middle set, Maglio blocked, she pops it up, Kahakai chases it down, and we play on here in the sequence. Middle to Burnett, high hands, right there is Granada, Hawaii on the attack, slide to Maglio, roll shot, what a diving save by Haddock. Free ball coming though, you'll see it has choices, step out to Maglio, touch shot again is sniffed out. Miller from off the net goes into the twine. And it's a point for the Rainbow Alley. Gotta give a lot of credit to BYU floor defense. They're just digging everything up. Maglio, I thought, put up two pretty good tip shots there on her slide maneuver. And uh, BYU there had an odd blocker to get that one tip. She came from 30 feet away to get that tip. Amazing play. And our first look at Kalei Greeley here tonight. And as she substitutes into the match and behind the service line to serve. Hawaii losing that second set, 25-12. That is the lowest set score for UH since scoring 11 twice against Texas back in September of 2009. But Mags putting her fingerprints literally and figuratively all over this third set so far. And Hawaii leading for the first time tonight, I believe, 3-1. They've gotten off to decent starts here in each of these sets. But BYU has found a way to swing things around considerably. Right there is Anderson on the two-hand save. Bump set goes to Granado, two blockers up. Touch shot works, and Hawaii up 4-1. We should describe what happened in the first match tonight. You describe what happened in the first match when Nevada and and uh, Baylor got into it. Those first two scores you told me about. <laughs> then there was a UCLA football type of comeback. <laughs> Could Hawaii do the same thing? Outside, Burnett, uh, excuse me, McKenna Miller going off of Anderson and out. Yeah, so night one of the Outbreaker Resorts Volleyball Challenge, and as you mentioned, it was Nevada and Baylor in the opening match and the Bears out of the Big 12 winning set one 25-10, set two 25-13. Uh, and then just kind of put it in cruise control and, and maybe cruised a little too much as Nevada came back winning set three 25-23. Maglio getting another kill there. And then pushing Baylor to extra points in the fourth. Yeah, three chances to win the fourth game. Had a chance to push it to a fifth. Baylor would end up coming back and winning 29. 27 to win that match in four sets, but you're right. I mean, I only put that out there because there, there is hope. Right? Sure, things can turn around in a hurry. A little mix up there in transition for BYU. So advantage Hawaii. Anderson bumps that outside to Granado. Touch shot. It works. All of a sudden, ball is starting to drop for Hawaii. BYU being a little out of sorts over there, but there's. As you said earlier, they're so athletic, so well coached, play such great floor defense. I, like Dave, agree that they, they, they've been known as the big blocking team, but never known for their great defense. Miller, kaboom from the outside. I mean, they have two fireballers on the outside pit, Kenna Miller and Ronnie Jones Perry. Perry they're, they're as good as any two lefts I've seen all year. So three serving six. As you saw, Natasha Burns on the floor for Hawaii, getting her first run of the night. Overpass, joust at the net, won easily by McKenna Miller. So, first, you gotta serve receive. Second question for Robin Amo Santos looking on. Where does the offense come from here in this rotation for Hawaii? Two-handed by Greeley, you'll see it. Goes high and away to Granado, down the line and in! Point Rainbow Wahine, they lead seven to four. Well, they took her cross-court shot, so she used, she used the line. Risky shot, went right by the antenna. Not much room there, but she found a great shot. 
Kenny Granado hitting for good percentage tonight. And you'll see it. Deals an ace onto the table. No aces tonight so far for Hawaii, although I think they've served pretty well. They, put, they pulled the center off the net quite a bit tonight, but no aces yet until that one. She is the team leader, 11 aces on the season coming into tonight, so give her a dozen. Right side, Miller off the block and out. So McKenna Miller now into double digits in kills. 11 put downs on 21 swing. So she's hitting 429. Ronnie Jones Perry is hitting 552. Those are the two outside hitters. Middle set to Burns. Oh, she just barely swiped it, and it was good enough. It took all six foot five inches of Natasha Burns that time to get that job done. It was a little fingertip kill right here. Fingertip kill. Burns, who barely played any volleyball in the summer dealing with a knee injury, just cleared prior to the season opener. And so she has been trying to play her way back into shape, play her way back into volleyball timing. As Kennedy Redding, red shirt freshman for BYU. Burns in uh, 2015, she broke her hand. In 16, it was her knee. She's had, she's had one uh, tough injury after another. Very late. Back behind the service line. Preseason all West Coast Conference selection. Had a career high 38 digs in a match against Ohio State last season. And 30 digs against Texas last year. <laughs> she, can, she can really play play on the floor. Six serving nine. Renato with the pass. You'll see it goes backside to Kelsch. Tried to slice it a little too far wide. She's been working on that shot a lot, though. Yeah, she has been working on that cut shot, but there what she really needed to do is just go for the high hands, deep corner, area one would have been a better selection, I think. So BYU within two. You'll see it. Goes back row to Granado. My word. That was powerful. All of that, and she brought Danko back into the front row with that shot. Haddock receives the brunt of that, knocks her back. That was an explosion from McKenna Granado. And Kahakai forces the overpass. Hawaii goes middle to Mags. Yasia knows when Mags is in front, the decent set, she's going to give it to her. Now, timeout taken by Heather Olmstead. And BYU, the Rainbow Wahine, out in front, set three. Welcome back. Time now for the Fujitsu Air Conditioning Cool Play of the Match. This came moments ago, C-Mac. Savannah Kahakai is going to serve a bullet and then go up, and she's going to take the uh, next pass that's going to allow Hawaii to be in system run a play, get Megs another kill. Baglio's eighth kill of the night. Out of the timeout, Savannah Kahakai rips into an ace. And Hawaii leads by a handful. Yes, a pair bases in this third set for the Rainbow Wahine. Largest lead of the night. Can they keep the pressure on? Kahakai, how do you like her jump serve? I love it. I love it. She's serving all over the place. Sarah Hampson, 6'7 freshman with the swing there. Kelsch the other way is dug up by Lake. Middle set. That's Burnett blocked. It winds up back on the Hawaii side. Back row set to Granado. Roll shot. It's good. Oh, what a brilliant roll shot by Granado. She could have taken a full swing, chose not to. Saw the defense, I think, in a wide perimeter stance. Open up the middle of the floor for her. And how about the set distribution? I mean, we are seeing Yosia go all over she the really place. She really is. She's giving Kelsch um, sets in, the, uh, in transition, which she do, normally does not. Here's Jones Perry, pushes it deep, two-handed in the air by Yosia. Back bump set to Castillo. Chased down by Jones Perry out of the bench area. Free ball coming for Hawaii. Yosia has options. Middle of bags. Now this crowd is coming to life. They're back in the game. And so is Hawaii. A 5-0 rainbow run here in 
and set three. Remember, Kalakai hit in high school at Farrington. So attacking the ball here behind the service line is nothing new for her. And that's an ace! She does it again! Coaching staff for BYU a bit puzzled. Now this Savannah Kahakai jump serve. Providing some spark here for Hawaii. Right side, the swing by Stetler, dug up in the back row by Granado. You'll see up, high and away to Castillo. Oh, but she follows through into the net. It's set just a little bit too tight to the net, but tough for Castillo to handle that one. So the net violation gives the point to BYU. Great run by Kahakai, though. Serving that tough ace up from uh, after the timeout was brilliant. 6-0 Rainbow Wahine run finally coming to a close. But you're right, the crowd back into this one. Oh, but immediately the Cougars go back to back points following a confusing sequence on serve receive between Granado and Castillo. Right now, Kalakai and Granado trying to take most of the court, pushing Castillo to the sideline because she is not normally the primary passer. They're attacking Castillo. Yep. Comes through there. Outside, it's Maglio through the block and down. Oh, I like the move of Mags to the outside. With the shield going in the middle to attack. Change. This is a new wrinkle. I told you we see some new wrinkles tonight. How about double-digit kills for Mags? 10 put down, 17 swings. She is blemish-free so far. Anderson the serve. Hawaii by seven. Middle set to Burnett, saved by Anderson. Back row set to Granado. What a save by Lake. You have got to be kidding me. Jones Perry is dug up. You'll see a bump set. Castillo. Cross court and in. And Hawaii continues to roll. Timeout BYU. Extension by Mary Lake just to keep the sequence alive, but it would be Casey Castillo bringing it to a close. Welcome back. Time for the Heineken inside the numbers. 3.48, that's the blocks per set as a team for BYU this season coming into tonight. That's right up there at number four in the country. Hawaii not too shabby coming in 3.2. And as it currently stands, BYU with five and a half team blocks compared to four for the Rainbow Wahine. But all Cougars through the first two sets, Hawaii showing a pulse. Here in set three, Jones Perry, one-handed in the air by Granado, saved out of press row by Kahaka. Alohi Robbins Hardy on the set here for BYU. And wisely, she decides to go outside to Ronnie Jones Perry, who gets kill number 19. Great set from Robbins Hardy. Right where uh, Jones Perry likes it. Hawaii by seven, slide goes to Mags, high hands and down. She continues to flourish. And you'll see a nose, who are hot in her ears. Really retreats back. Good to see Alohi Robbins Hardy though, one of Hawaii's very own out of Kamehameha Kapalama, getting some important reps out there now at setter. As head coach Heather Olmstead wants to see this offense through a different lens. Net violation called against Hawaii on what was a hammer by Burnett. Dug up, though. And it's a point for BYU. I think that uh, Granato just barely tickled the twine there and got the net. So Cozy Burnett will serve. Right side set, Maglio, high hands, diving save, tight to the net, put down by Granado. Now Hawaii, in trying to win a set, not only trying to keep themselves alive in this match, but the way this early season has transpired, beating BYU and taking a set, just a set, is an accomplishment. They've only lost two sets 
so far this season coming into tonight. One against nationally ranked Ohio State, the other came against Missouri. Chance for Hawaii, outside, Granado! Another Granado grenade from the outside hitter position. I like it, I like it. We're, we're running out of things to call her. Monster hits. 14 kills for Granado, 29 attempts, and hitting 379. You like those numbers, I know. Middle set, Redding is blocked back. And a free ball coming again for Hawaii. You'll see him. Outside, Granado, the touch. Oh, sniffed out nicely by Jones Perry. Here's Miller. And a net violation called against the Rainbow Wahine. You'll see it got caught up in the net, but Hawaii hanging in there against this very physical BYU team. Making some great digs. We're also coming out and have to make some good, couple of good serves. Now they've got to rotate quickly to get Maglio back in the front. Robbins Hardy with the serve. Outside set, Granado off the block. Right there is Greeley. You'll see it. She'll go to Granado a second time. Heavy-handed swing is dug up. So Robbins Hardy backside, roll shot, Stetler. Right there is you'll see it. Kahakai comes over. From off the net, Granado got a pretty good crack at it. Here's Stetler again, down the line, popped up by Kahakai. Granado a fourth time, the roll shot gets to the floor. Finally, a roll shot or tip shot that BYU does not pick up. They picked up almost everything. They've been like vacuum cleaners back there in the back row with all of Hawaii's tip shots. Not that one, though. Granado scores. So 21 serving 12. Hawaii by nine here in set three. You'll see her into the net. She was going for it. Not a bad idea to go for it back there. The Hawaii, uh, you know, that, that, that big a lead, giving up one like that is not bad, given the fact that she could have also gotten a point there with an ace. Here's Kelsch getting the swing from the outside. Good save there by Miller. Jones Perry dug up by Yosia. Burns sets up Granado, two-handed in the air by Miller. Jones Perry couldn't get it over the tape. Point for Hawaii. Defense is being played by both sides. It's pretty amazing to watch. The first couple sets, it was the, it was the Jones Perry showing a lot of offense. Now we're seeing an incredible amount of defense by both sides. Whatever Robin Amo Santos told this team during the intermission, they have come out much more inspired here in set three. Outside, Jones Perry blocked by Kelsch. Right side now, Stetler blocked. She keeps it alive. Stetler a second time, high hands, right there is Granado. Advantage Hawaii, you'll see it to Burns, blocked. Played off the net by Yosia. And two-handed over by Granado. Advantage Cougars, Jones Perry, dug up by Granado. And we'll play on here. Bump set, high and away to Jones Perry, off the block and down. What a rally. And the crowd applauds the effort on both sides. It was a great rally. Great defense with terrific blocking up front by both sides. Boy, finally figuring out a way to slow down Jones Perry, at least getting a hand on some of her attacks. That's her 20th kill, ties her career high. She had 13 kills in the first set alone. Castillo dug up by Lake. Jones Perry blocked and Ruth. And I think Natasha Burns might have gotten most of that one. She's going to the outside. Yeah, she and Kelch together, I think, got it. Crucial, crucial point. Maglio back in the front row. And here's that jump serve from Kahakai. Outside, Jones Perry blocked out of touch. Kelch sets back row to Granado. That's dug up by Robbins Hardy. Jones Perry from off the net. Punched up in the air by Yosia. Castillo, quick swing. Two-handed in the air by Robbins Hardy, what a sequence. Jones Perry off the block and down. And that's kill number 21. She had to effort for it though, and that's a new career high. Yeah, that was a great swing. She, she didn't have much of an approach here. I think it was just a standing jump and up and just gets the ball up in the field goal through Maglio's hands. 15 serving 23. 
You'll see it. Middle to Castillo. Got the touch. Point Hawaii. And it is Aloha ball for the Bulls in set three. And they set a second tempo set to Castillo there. High two in the middle. She finds a way to slap it high off the hands. Where did that play come from? And Claire Marie Anderson on to serve. Outside, Jones Perry dug up by Kahakai. You'll see a slide to Maglio. Two handed in the air by Lake. Jones Perry off the block and down. Oh, she knows how to tool the block. And that Mary Lake knows how to dig a ball. Oh, boy. Wow. She's got uh, 12, 13, 14 wins now. 14. She's putting on a show. Kahakai as well playing some great defense. 14 for Savannah. So they've matched each other in that department. Aloha ball for Hawaii in the third. Maglio. The block right there is Lake. Outside, Miller, cross court and wide. No touch. And how you figure Hawaii getting trounced through the first two sets. Comes back and wins demonstratively in set three, 25, 16. How much more do they have? Can they keep the momentum going? Set four coming up. Hoops in the house. Rainbow Warrior basketball team taking in the action here. On the opening night of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge and Hawaii officially able to make it a match after lopsided losses in sets one and two. They flipped the script in set three in large part because of Emily Maglio's exploits. Well, they moved Max to the outside there in that one rotation. She switches with Castillo and goes to the outside. But in the middle, she's just been unstoppable. 11 kills, no errors, hit 524. And how about these numbers for Hawaii hitting in the third set? They hit 385 to BYU's 175. And they, they sighted out at an 82% clip to BYU's 54. That 82% clip is way better than their 47% and 33 in the first two sets. So Hawaii's offense on serve receive much more productive. So we go to set four. They swap sides again. And Savannah Kahakai will serve first. This has been one of the delights of this opening night to the Outrigger Resorts Challenge is the unveiling of Savannah Kahakai's new jump serve. And it's been a doozy. Outside it goes to Jones Perry, dug up by Kahakai. What else can she do? Renato is dug up as well by Lindy Haddock back in at setter. Jones Perry down the line and wide. Point for Hawaii. And now you have some of the BYU hitters thinking a little bit about placement against the block and Savannah Kahakai. Exactly. And, and Perry has not missed many of those attacks. He's been pretty flawless all night, only five times. Good pass there by Lake outside Jones Perry. Goes off the tape and how hard luck there that time for Ronnie Jones Perry. Her sixth hitting error. Well, she had no errors for the first two sets. They got to off. I think almost all five errors or six errors have come in the third and fourth sets. 13 of her career high 22 kills in that opening stanza. Kahakai tickles the tape again. Middle set, that's Redding dug up. Bump set off the net and a free ball coming here for the Cougars. Haddock goes middle to Redding again. A little paintbrush action, sniffed out by Yosia. Here's Castillo, deep corner, dug up back over the net. Magrio takes care of business. Again, Hawaii's back row defense making the plays. And allow Maglio to get some swings at the net. Now some extra height inserted into the match in a big way. 6'7 freshman from Pleasant Grove, Utah, Sarah Hampson, back out onto the floor. Kahakai continues to serve into the net it goes, but a good start for Hawaii certainly here in set four. See that smile? No, she's loving to reserve, having fun with it. Next one points, see there, you can see her smile there? Well, oh, I got my jump serve going. Gets to unleash some of that uh, vintage Savannah aggression. Someone's got to come over on that second touch. It's a bump set to Mags on the outside roll shot. Saved by the Cougars. Backside, it goes to Hampson, dug up by Granado. You'll see it outside. Castillo down the line and in. She went right by the 6'7 blocker. 
she challenged her, didn't she? Right at her. Not much room between that blocker and the line. Oh, there was a, actually, take it back, there was a pretty big gap there. Good lead there by Casey Castillo and Anderson on to serve. Outside, Jones Perry comes flying in. He blasts it through the Hawaii defense. Kill number 23 on 48 attempts. These are the kind of swings that made her an MVP in last week's tournament at Boise State. Cougars coming into tonight ranked 10th in the ABCA poll. One of just 10 unbeatens in the top 25 rankings coming into this week. Granado from the back row. They've been working that pipe set a lot here tonight, Chris. Yeah, you know, they're doing it without wearing Granado out. She's got 36 swings, but it doesn't feel like she's had to swing every time at every single broken ball. She's, she's being set on play sets more than anything else. Hawaii, of course, two and four. They have lost their last eight matches against ranked opponents. Dating back a couple of seasons. Burnett in the middle. But once again, this is a Hawaii team that has shown some grit. Certainly you would have liked to have seen a greater effort out of them through the first two sets. But to be down and reeling in the way that they were going into the locker rooms and to win that set three, that speaks volumes about the character that this team has at its disposal. The question now becomes how far can they carry that? Emily Magfield carrying the load once again on that sequence. Exactly. I think the first two sets were more about how good BYU was rather than how bad Hawaii was. Because clearly you had a, a career playing by you know, Veronica Jones Perry those first two sets. Right side, here's Burnett through the block and down. Burns was up there in range. Just couldn't seal the deal. So four serving six and Cozy Burnett. After starting 31 matches as a sophomore two seasons ago, played just 12 sets last year, dealt with an abdominal injury. And so when you think about it, the two middles for BYU as that serve goes long. Burnett and Kennedy Redding, who was a redshirt freshman, did not play last year. Now, Heather Olmstead, third season head coach, pointing that out, saying, you know, it's still a work in progress just to kind of get a true feeling of, of what we have here uh, in that middle position. As Savannah Kahakai's reached a milestone, moves into 10th place on the career digs list. Outside, it's Miller, dug up by Noreen Yosia. Tight to the net. Played by Granado just barely. Hawaii missing an opportunity perhaps there. Outside, Miller sends it long. Point for the Rainbow Wahine. Coming into tonight, Savannah Kahakai needed 15 digs to reach the top 10. She has done it. She surpasses one of the legends, Lily Kahumoku, to secure that 10th spot. And there's still a lot of time for her to maneuver up that ladder. Outside, Miller again from off the net. Good touch on the block. Kahakai back bump set to Granado. That one was dug up near the scoreboard. Miller, touch shot. Granado was waiting. Backside, it's Kels through the block. Lake pops it up in the air. Miller will get a swing from over his shoulder, two-handed up by Greeley. Right side, Kels a little too far wide. Almost got the pin there. Miller now taking a crack at it and gets it down. Well, we're going to get a lot of credit these long rallies. They're playing some terrific defense and taking a lot of chances swinging, especially from that left side. Now it's starting to pay off. And served by BYU, Hawaii by three. Right side, it's Granado. Stuffed. She was suffocated over there. Not a lot of room to maneuver. Miller getting a good chunk of that block right next to Kennedy Redding. Just a solid block. McKenna Miller, huge up there. I wonder if she was an All-American last year. And a likely All-American again this year. He's a true freshman. Third-team ABCA All-American distinction. 
Granado tried to push it through. Outside it's Miller. High hands. Right there is Kahaka. Granado. She goes high hands. And that one will not be returned. Point for Hawaii. It's 9-6. One of the few times that Mary Lake didn't dig Granado. Smart move to go high hands because that block was well formed. Ready to stuff McKenna. Not to be that time. Hannah Granado will serve. A good one. Outside it goes to Stetler from off the net. Oh, Kahakai couldn't secure it. Might have taken an out ball there. That was way high up on her chest, and she was near the line. She got no call from her teammates, though, so she did the wise thing and took, took the ball, but um, definitely got handcuffed. Great scramble play that time by BYU. Stetler was way off the net and still able to make it work. Yep. USA Junior National Team. Utah. They're just filled with players with the accolades. Accolades. There's another one of them, McKenna Miller. 43rd ranked prospect in the nation coming out of high school. Natasha Burns, perhaps not as highly rated, but she has had an impact tonight. The red shirt sophomore stands at 6'5 from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Here's Kahaka. And it's an ace! Ace number three for Savannah Kahaka. Amazing. Where has this been all year? Savannah, you've been what? keeping it from us. She had four races on the season coming into tonight. She now has three in this match alone. That was another good serve. Middle set goes to Redding. And she pounds it down. That's a, that's a good way to make use of the 6-4 Redding. We set it high to there in the middle. And she's just going to go pretty much over any block that she sees. And now Mary Lake with the serve. Hawaii by three. Outside, it's Castillo. The block was late. And she made the pay. Kill number seven for Casey Castillo. Casey Castillo doing a nice job of seeing that the block was late. And she took advantage. So 12 serving eight. But Marie Anderson gets it in. Middle set goes to Burnett off the block and down. There are so many weapons to deal with on this BYU side. Posey Burnett, who was a redshirt freshman, wasn't playing. It was her redshirt year back in 2013 when BYU came into this building and took Hawaii down in straight sets in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Outside is Castillo, the touch shot. Pancake saved Stetler. No, she couldn't come up with it. The hand was down. It just wasn't really in the spot that it yeah. needed to be. Exactly. Well, Castillo continues to amaze, even though she was a little bit sick this week. She hits for high percentage. You know, she just does not hit a lot of balls out now. She's taking the smart shot all the time. Not always getting the big kills, but she'll wind up and uh, wail away if she has to. But otherwise, just playing smart volleyball. 13 serving nine. Kalei Greeley with the serve. Middle set, Burnett, that's tight to the net. The dink works. So Burnett starting to climb. She's into double figures now in put down. She has 10 kills. There's a lot is bunched up. Opens up that left side of the court. Wide open, Kahakai just could not get there in time. She was playing deep for the dig. Hawaii in that third set able to prevent one of those BYU runs, those hefty runs that we saw in sets one and two. Huge runs. They got to try to do that once again, prevent that Cougar surge. Easier said than done. Ronnie Jones Perry with the serve. Greeley just got the pass up. Here's Mags against the double block, popped up in the air along the net. Jones Perry from the back row block. But she's able to save it herself. Miller will get a touch out of it. She's blocked. Miller a second time. Diving save. Greeley over the net. Scramble play for Hawaii. Here's Granado blocked. And Ruth. 
And Lindy Adam with a not so subtle point through the net right at McKenna Granado. She's pretty competitive, isn't she? Hey, it's Hawaii BYU. Oh, yeah, sure. What do you expect? There you go. Here's Granado. Now she decides not to point the other way through the net, although she had every right to point for Hawaii. 14 serving 11. The fact that Hawaii has even made this a match is remarkable as Gianna Guinasso gets ready to serve. Backside, it's Burnett against the solo block! And McKenna Granado says, not in here! The solo stuff by McKenna Granado. Hawaii by four. Let's take a look at McKenna. Um, um, Ma Emily Maglio right here as she is going to be attacking the ball. Well, she's, BYU is paying so much attention to her on this serve that they're going to do. They're going to jump up. They're going to jump up right there in the middle. Is Cosi Burnett and watch them take that little tiptoe jump, and it's going to make a big difference. And Castillo having an open block on the outside. There's a tiptoe jump block, and there is the. The great swing by Casey Castillo. She gets a hole in the block, and it's all because a lot of attention was being paid to Emily Maglio, especially on good passes. She's been Hawaii's go-to player. Why not being set her on a good pass? But not that time. You'll see it. I think he really has the mindset of having a more diverse offense, moving the ball around a little bit. And that was a great example of moving it around. And that's how it works, presented by Central Pacific Bank. Guinasso out of the timeout with the serve. Here's Miller from off the net. She has been doing some serious damage when she's been back near the three-meter line. It's pretty amazing. Guinasso did a nice job of serving there. Fortunately, another pass off the net about the 10-foot, the, uh, the 11-foot line, so no middle attack. Well, I knew it was going to the outside left and still couldn't stop Miller. Hawaii by three. Here's Granado swooping in and delivering on her 19th kill of the evening. That was her 46th attack. What's even more impressive is her hitting percentage. 19 kills, hitting 304. 300 is a magic number for an outside for Granado. If she had 250, I'd be happy on the night. Because she's hitting so many balls. And that's an ace! Ace number five on the night. Ace number two for Yosia. Kahakai's got the other three, and here comes Hawaiian import right now. Alohi. Alohi Robbins Hardy back onto the floor. A lot of supporters for her here in the stands, so the volume turned up anytime she checks in. Here's Yosia, Hawaii by five. Robbins Hardy goes middle. The touch shot by Redding is blocked back. And a net violation called against, no, it'll be a lift call against BYU. It looked like Redding had wound up in the net. Yeah. Either way, it's a point for Hawaii and a bit of an argument here from Heather Olmstead. Yeah, well, I think just kind of rolled up her forearms what happened. It's not a reviewable challenge, by the way. Correct. 18 serving 12, you'll see it. That's an overpass. Chance for Hawaii. You'll see it with options. Goes outside the Granada. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. Point for Hawaii. That is 20 kills for Granado. And this Dan Sheriff Center, which an hour ago was very, very quiet, is all of a sudden getting routed. And if you're Heather Olmstead, third year head coach here for BYU, you have to be wondering what the heck is happening. Yeah. As Maddie Graham goes into the match for the Cougars. Lucia. Oh, that one just missed the end line. Good effort. Lucia you know, is moving herself along the back line. I'm glad to see her doing that to give herself some variety in her serve. She was going all area one to area five almost exclusively. Now she's moving it all over the court. And Robbins Hardy to serve. Float serve, two handed in the air by Kahakai. Granado goes high and away to Kelsch. Great up there by Jones Perry. Miller is blocked back. 
Then we'll get a second swing at it by a triple block. I mean, it doesn't matter. As hot as Jones Perry was early in this match, McKenna Miller has filled the bill here in the latter stages. Yeah, they're, they're both just great pin hitters. So hard to stop. BYU within five. But again, the potential to put together a gargantuan run. Robbins Hardy down the line. Granado first touch. Granado gets the swing. Gets the kill. Oh, she's, she's feeling it right now. You know. She wants the set. She's going up with a lot of confidence. She saw that line open. Great peripheral vision and great shot selection. And it's interesting that you use that terminology. That's exactly what Robin Amos Santos was talking about in the Game On segment. She wants one of her players or a collection of her players to have that mindset. Set me the ball. It is in those moments of importance and drama and high tension, she wants someone who demands the ball. And right now, that someone is McKenna Granado. Time out, BYU. Well, you're one of the guys that pretends? Oh, big time, pretenders? big time, big time, yeah. <laughs> But this has turned out to be quite an evening here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Night one of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge in Hawaii. Appeared to be dead to rights after two sets. They lost set one 25-18. Only mustered 12 points in the second set. Then out of the intermission, it's like a completely different team. They take set three, 25-16. They're up 21-14 here in the fourth. Trying to push it to a decisive fifth set. And hitting 435 here in the fourth, mind Amazing. you. Amazing. And it's an ace by McKenna Granado. She gets in on the service scoring party. Out of the timeout, serving up an ace. Normally out of the timeout, you just get it in, making sure you keep the momentum. That one, she had a lot of juice on that. 22 serving 14. Robbins Hardy goes outside. Miller is blocked back. Free ball here for Hawaii. You'll see it. Middle to Burns. A little paint crush. A little paint crush, about 12 miles an hour, but big kill. <laughs> Even Natasha saying, it wasn't my best effort, <laughs> but it's on the board. 23 serving 14. Overpass. Couldn't quite get it down. Scramble play. BYU couldn't return it. And Burns gets another. Oh, shucks. I can't believe I just did that. Shot. And Hawaii has a Loha ball in the fourth. What is happening? Pinch me. Is this really happening? Bump set to Miller. Dug up by Granado. But that'll be another kill for Miller. That's number 16 for BYU's McKenna. But a long uphill battle here for the Cougars as this crowd enjoying the display. A comeback rally by its Rainbow Wahine. Castillo, high hand, and down! This is amazing. I hope nobody turned their TV sets off at home after the first two sets. Robin Amos Santos' reaction. Because ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, we are headed to a fifth Hawaii and BYU. Well, we're going to a fifth, BYU and Hawaii. I and mean, we've had some classic chapters of competition between these two programs across all the sports. And here we are at the Stan Sheriff Center tonight, first night of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge. We're going to a fifth in one of the most unlikely <laughs> scenarios, Hawaii, getting demolished in the first two sets. BYU was plus 20 in the first two sets. Hawaii plus 19 in sets three and four. Can you believe it, Steve? This is epic. I mean, who, go figure. I thought we were going to be out of here at like 8, 8.30 tonight after about 90 minutes. And we'd be gone because BYU was playing so well, just running Hawaii right out of the gym. And then take a 10-minute break, Hawaii comes back and reverses everything. Hitting percentages, blocking, 
scoring. Everything got reversed. And here we are in the fifth. It's, I'm shocked. A lot, so, of, a lot of components to this comeback by Hawaii, but scoring from the service line among them. The Rainbow Wahine with six service aces in the match, and the majority of those coming in sets three and four. And, uh, and you'll see it been leading the way, but McKenna Granado got in on the ace party as well. Big question. I, I think that another adjustment that Robin uh, Amos Santos made during the, uh, the, the break between sets two and three was she put, she's got Mago hitting the outside a little bit now in a couple of rotations, and I think that has helped Hawaii's side out ability. Hawaii playing in a five-set match for the third time this season. Remember, they went five twice in the opening weekend against Marquette and UCLA, lost both of those matches. This is the first five-set match for BYU. They hadn't lost more than a single set. In fact, lost just two sets, one separate matches coming into tonight's battle with Hawaii. Remember, another one said 64. And 63 and 8 over two years. So she's only lost eight matches in two years. She's not used to being in this kind of situation where the loss is a reality. Savannah Kahakai jump serving to start set five. Throw everything out the window. We're playing a fifth. Jones Perry. What a save by Kahakai. That was brilliant. Castillo is blocked. Kept alive here by the Cougars. Jones Perry gets a swing from off the net. Dug up by Kahakai. That's number 18 for her. Granado the touch. Played off the net by Jones Perry. Free chance for Hawaii. You'll see her with options. Middle of the bags. Point. Rainbow Wahine. Watch Kai Kai on this save right here. Just lays it out. Pops up with her left hand. And here's the end of the rally right here with Maglio bearing it. Maglio was the third choice of that. She didn't get set till the end of that rally. Nice to see Yosia using her as a deception a little bit. Kai jump serve. Another good one, Jones Perry winds up, uncoils, and gets the point for BYU. We are knotted at one. Kill number 24 for Ronnie Jones Perry. You gotta give her a lot of credit. Even though Hawaii knows the ball is going out to her because of where the pass was, still can't stop her. 24 times she's beat this Hawaii block. Hitting over 350. Danielle Stetler to serve. You'll see a middle set to Mags was a little low, and she got blocked. Blocked by Cozy Burnett, and BYU up 2-1. Every serve, every touch, so important here in a fifth set. BYU, three straight outright West Coast Conference championships. And it's going to be a point for BYU as you'll see it had to go above the net to try to keep that one in. And a stumbling start here in set five for the Rainbow Wahines. And it's all, it's all about the passing and, and there's some good BYU serving going on right now as well. Danelle Stetler putting up a good, tough, low driving jump throw. Hawaii needs a point. You'll see it outside. Castillo off the block and down. Castillo. Claire Marie Anderson on to serve. Two serving three. Castillo now hitting over 300, by the way. 308 for the match. Jones Perry off the block. Saved Kahakai over the net. So the Cougars back to work. They go middle to Burnett. Blocked and roof. Maglio and Castillo. Castillo came over and helped in the middle. She could have gotten stuck on the outside. Instead, she slides over to her right, helps Maglio out, and they get the block. Block number eight and a half. So we're tied at three. Jones Perry. Punishing yet another set that comes her way. That is kill number 25 as she continues to build on her career high. For number nine, she has been sensational. She's really, been, she's really been fun to watch. She's got the whole game. She can pass, she can block, and she's just got a majorly quick arm. We're serving three, pass tight to the net, and a free swing for McKenna Miller. Point BYU, they're up two. 
Well, what his passing was so solid in sets three and four. Already we've seen a couple of occasions where it's been a little wobbly here in the fifth. Ronnie Jones, uh, Ronnie Jones Perry with a good solid jump floater as well. Attacking Anderson, she delivers that time. Back row set to Granado. Dug up by Stetler. Here's Miller from off the net. Sends it long. And a point for Hawaii. Now substitute Kalei Greeley in for the Rainbow One. Greeley with the serve. Passed by the freshly inserted Tristan Moser, defensive specialist. Good up there by Granado, chased down by Anderson. Greeley two hands it over. Chance for the Cougars outside. It's Miller with some major heat. And BYU by two. You know, BYU's got such a luxury of having two amazing pin hitters. As soon as Jones Perry rotates to the back row, whoops, here comes her counterpart. Miller rotating to the front. Both of them with big time heavy arms. Burnett with the serve. Sly goes to Maglio. Blocked and roof. Solo stuff McKenna Miller. How big has she been for the Cougars here late? That's been huge. That is a rarity. A solo block on an Emily Maglio slide set. You don't see that much. One All-American going up against another All-American. And now Elohi Robbins Hardy, where you see some of the Robbins family. 80 tickets purchased by the Robbins Ohana. Granado blocked and roofed. And all of a sudden, that reputed block for BYU, the one that is up near the top statistically in the nation, surfacing once again. We'll swap sides. Welcome back, McKenna Granado. 21 kills to lead the way for the Rainbow Wahine. Double digits from Emily Maglio. She's got 14, as well as Casey Castillo with 10. On the other side, Jones Perry, career high, 25 kills for the Cougars. McKenna Miller has come up big here as of late. 18 kills, hitting 310. Had a solo stuff on Emily Maglio just moments ago. BYU with three team blocks in this fifth set alone. Yeah, they, their block has really come alive. And how about the two liberals, Savannah Kahakai with 20 digs, Mary Leak with 16. Oh, what he needs a point in the worst way. Granado blocked back. She'll take another crack at it. Tried to go high hands, it worked. Second time was a charm, and Hawaii back within three. They made the turn, if you will, swap inside at eight, with BYU at eight four. And now Gianna Guanasso back to serve. If you're just joining us, BYU romped in sets one and two. Rainbow Wahine completely flipped the script in sets three and four, and here we are in the fifth. Middle set, Redding, and Greeley couldn't handle it. Came in a little too hot for her to be able to secure it. Redding, Redding hitting that second, second tempo set. A little high two in the middle has been so effective. She just goes up and over the block and tough to defend. That's a high point of contact. Coming off of the palm of Kennedy Redding. It's a nine serving five. Yosia goes outside. Granado. Did she get the touch? Yes, she did. Granado continues to deliver Hawaii back within three again. He has got the hot hand. Granado now with 54 swings, hitting 315. Wow. In a double double performance as well. 13 digs for Granado. Here's Noreen Yosia. The pass. Right side. It's Miller. And she's been unstoppable. She's been a difference maker. Last half of set four, all of set five, she's just scoring either by attacking or scoring with her block. As a true freshman last year, averaged 3.8 kills per set, had a 31 kill match versus Ohio State. BYU by four. Kelsch. Blocked back, and Hawaii sends it over. Cougars on the attack. Redding straight down to the middle of the floor, and the Cougars up. Five here in the fifth. And Robin Amos Santos 
will use one of two remaining timeouts. Time is running out for the Wahine. Well, strange things have happened in set fives. Strange things happened in this match with Hawaii coming back from down 0-2. when it looked like they were down and out. Just to force this fit, but now trailing by five out of the timeout, Miller serving for BYU. Granado, they need it, pushes it deep, saved by Lake. That's her 17th dig outside Ronnie Jones Perry. Remember her? Career high 26 kills. Yeah, she is she's something very, very special. Goes up to a really quick arm swing, great peripheral vision, sees the line open and takes it. We'll see a one hand set to Burns, she just knuckles it over. Advantage Cougars. Redding off the block and out. BYU closing in for us. Robin Amol Santos goes to the bench. We'll bring in Sophia Howling. The Bulls again in a couple of sticky rotations here. Going back to the theme of sets one and two. Two middle blockers in now at the same time, Burns and Howling. Outside, it's Granado against the double block. Wow, that had some force on it. Dug it back over the net. Middle set to Burns. Missed it wide. Point BYU, and it's Aloha ball for the Cougars. In set five. And it will be McKenna Miller to serve. Oh, what? He needs a point. Burns is blocked back. You'll see it. Outside to Granado. That's dug up. Slapped over and long by Redding. Oh, he's not Powell just yet. Kenna Granado. With Aloha Ball remaining for the match for the Cougars. Set goes high and away. Here's Jones Perry off the block and out. And fittingly, it is Ronnie Jones Perry on a career night ending what was a classic battle back and forth between Hawaii and BYU. But the Cougars would win it in the fifth, 15 7. And another close but no cigar, heart wrenching defeat for the Rainbow Wahine. Yeah, really, really tough to lose uh, three five setters in, in the four times they play nationally ranked teams. Very, very difficult to handle. Hopefully, Lavalamo Santos and her staff can get this team back up, believing in themselves and be ready to play Baylor tomorrow night. But what an amazing match tonight. A Jekyll and Hyde match, to say the least. One of the strangest matches in terms of how topsy-turvy it was. Blowout wins for BYU in sets one and two. Hawaii doing the same thing in reverse in sets three and four. And then BYU reasserting itself in the fifth. In the end, though, it would be the Cougars improving to 7-0. and Hawaii falls to 2-5. and five. Scott Robbs is with Robin Amo Santos. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I am with the coach, who's, I think, probably a little fatigued after tonight's match. It was like being on a roller coaster. The first two sets, very one-sided in favor of BYU. Then the next two sets, you guys played very well. And then anybody can take the fifth set. You guys come up short. Yeah, I don't know what it is with this group. I, they, they just like me going in there and they like me yelling at them. I guess that's what fire. I guess I got to yell at them from the beginning, maybe. <laughs> Too much positivity over here. What was the main difference, though, between the first two sets and sets three and four? I think we just came out and we just relaxed and played. You know, I don't know what happened. They were a little bit tight the first two sets. But then we started touching a little bit more balls. We actually hit some balls over, the, like, over in the court. You know, that's the biggest difference, just them relaxing, I think. We saw a lot of new faces out on the floor in different positions. We also saw Savannah Kahakai with that terrific jump serve. Yeah, she was holding on that. She's like, ah, no, I don't know if Coach Robin lets me do it. I'm like, hey, whatever works, you know. So, yeah, go ahead, keep jump serving. You know, getting different players on the court, that's good for us. Maybe, you know, we got a little bit of that. We're just trying whatever we can, you know. Coach, congratulations. And uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow night after uh, Baylor. Okay. All right. <laughs> Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Robert. Thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match for BYU. Pretty easy. Veronica Ronnie Jones-Perry, 27 kills, career high, 375 hitting percentage. 
three blocks and seven digs. And McKenna Granado, give her credit. She was rolling tonight, 23 kills, hitting 298, three blocks, a double-double performance with those 13 digs and a service ace. Obviously for Robin Amos Santos, this is a tough one to swallow. Her team comes all the way back from down 0-2. It looked like they were reeling after getting blown out in the first two sets and then showing the kind of grit and character that we've kind of come to know from this team here in 2017, able to force a fifth set only to see BYU once again reestablish its authority. BYU is one heck of a team, perhaps with legitimate Final Four aspirations. Hawaii took them to a fifth. What can they extract from this, Chris? Well, I think they, what they can extract is that uh, Hawaii is also a very good team who is still trying to identify itself and figure out uh, who's going to be playing where, uh, you know, what kind of a team are we going to be this year? Are we going to be a scrappy team that comes from behind? Are we going to be a team that... Uh, Gets on people, people from right very from the get-go. Robert, you can tell Robin Amos Santos was frustrated. She said, well, should I start yelling at him before the game so I play well in <laughs> the first two sets? So even she is struggling to find out what the identity of this team is. But I think what they can take away is what a great comeback. What yeah. a turnaround. They could have easily folded up tents after the second set because they were getting blown out of the gym. So to come back the way they did, that's got to give them a lot of hope and confidence for sure. Uh, for us on the outside looking in, though, as, as we as members of the media as well as, you know, part of the fan base, if you will, as we try to dissect what this team is all about. How difficult is that with these near victories, with these near classic comeback victories, five set loss to Marquette, UCLA, and now BYU. How do we start to, from the outside looking in, define this team? Yeah, it's really, really hard. You know, the, the Marquette match was winnable, the UCLA match was winnable. San Diego came out flat. Yeah. So you look at the four losses, and, you, and this one was winnable, obviously. So you look at the four matches, you go, like, Hawaii could easily be, you, you know, 6-0, um, you know, Five, six and zero right now, rather than two and four or whatever it is. Well, now they're two and five. They're but two and five. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're San Diego really the only the, lopsided. Exactly, defeat. exactly. So, to to know that they're they've been in every single match and w every single match was winnable except for that one, the San Diego one. I, they've got to start believing in themselves. You know, you know, we can really beat anybody. That's a top ten team we just lost to tonight. In fact, I'd say they're like a, more like a top seven or eight team. They're very very good, especially those two pin hitters, Miller and Jones Perry, are phenomenal pin hitters. And uh, they're well coached. They played some great defense tonight. Both teams playing some great defense. I love watching Kakai yeah. and Lake play tonight. They're such terif terrific uh, liberos. So I think Hawaii cannot get down on themselves yeah. for sure. They're a good volleyball team. They just have yet to show all the pieces in one night put together. 20 digs for Savannah Kahakai, now 10th all-time in the career digs list here at the University of Hawaii with its illustrious history. That is saying something. And yeah, maybe easier said than done. You got to get over it. But man, these close but no cigar losses certainly can be painful. But they'll be back on the floor tomorrow. That's the great thing about sports. You always live to fight another day. And tomorrow it is the Baylor Bears on night two of the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge. Hawaii now two and five set to take the floor tomorrow night. We, of course, will bring you the action. That will do it for Chris McLaughlin and myself. Don't forget about the post-game show. I'm Kanoa Leahy, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, from the Stan Sheriff Center, we bid you aloha.